Hi there, welcome back to UOIT's Workplace Learning course. In this video, I'll briefly introduce you to several basic concepts about learning organizations. We will begin with a few analysis questions, followed by defining what is a learning organization. Next, we'll explore the five components of a learning organization. Some people confuse learning organizations with organizational learning, so we'll examine what this means. We'll also see how learning organizations have evolved in our networked world. Finally, we'll look at indicators of true learning organizations before we wrap up with the synthesis questions. While watching this video, ask yourself what you think the term learning organizations means. Do you agree or disagree with the definition presented here? Also, would you describe organizations you've worked for as learning organizations? This doesn't have to be a yes or no answer. Instead, think in terms of degrees. Peter Senge wrote the seminal book on learning organizations in 1990. He describes a learning organization as people with the organization who are continuously learning and sharing knowledge with others, all for the betterment of the organization. Clearly, this is supported and strongly encouraged by all levels of management, and the purpose of this continuous learning is to help the organization grow and evolve. Senge describes five key components of successful learning organizations, all of which must be present. Let's take a quick look at each component. As the slide says, Senge believes the systems are the cornerstone of learning organizations, but also believes that systems are not used correctly in the majority of organizations. This is because we tend to look at obvious solutions to problems and take shortcuts without taking into consideration the long-term ramification. Thus, Senge encourages looking into the entire system and having a holistic vision and not a limited vision. Personal mastery of knowledge isn't about merely learning. It's also embracing the discipline or topic and having deep, almost intuitive understandings and insights. It's beyond merely having skills and knowledge and the ability to do or know something. It's about having a vision and a thirst for always knowing more. You may want to think of a very talented athlete such as Sidney Crosby, who is always practicing, always learning, and always excelling towards greatness. While we think he is outstanding, he's always striving to be better. Organization mental models allow and encourage change while maintaining control and the direction. According to Senge, mental models come about through fostering transparency and openness in new ideas and directions. This is true for both employees and the organization. While managers may have a clear vision of the organization's direction, it's much more productive to have a shared vision that includes employees' visions of the future. This allows feelings of ownership and pride in the direction of the organization, as opposed to employees feeling as if they must comply with management wishes. Finally, team learning brings together the shared vision and personal mastery of knowledge into the team environment. Bringing together these valued resources allows the organization and team to evolve and the organization to remain relevant and profitable. It's fairly easy to confuse the learning organization with organizational learning, as they are very closely related. This definition provides us with a few key words. Firstly, activity and the process implies a transference of knowledge within an organization. This gaining and transference of knowledge is seen as a stepping stone to the ideal of the learning organization. This implies that the components we just learned about are not all present in organizational learning. Organizational learning appears to be much more centered around the organization creating and gaining knowledge as opposed to employees gaining, sharing, and participating in how the knowledge is used within the organization. Much has changed since Peter Senge's book was published. Today we are connected to the internet, which allows for individuals to become lifelong learners and take responsibility for how we learn, when we learn, and what we learn. Harold Jarkey, however, sees many organizations still living in the 1990s, where they have erected barriers that place limits on the networked learners to participate in the learning organizational model. To elaborate on this, Jarkey summarizes three indicators of true learning organizations. 
He sees this as people at all levels narrating their work in a transparent environment. Next, the daily routine supports social learning. And finally, time is made available for reflection and sharing stories. The following three synthesis questions are a bit different. I'd like you to imagine a graphic organizer that illustrates the connections between the various positions in your organization and try to understand how they foster a learning organization. Try to describe the unique connections each have. Do you know or can you graph out what activities are taking place? Finally, how are the learners affected by these connections? The topic of learning organizations is very deep, and much more has been written about it over the years. It's important, though, to remember that true learning organization is an ideal. Do the readings and watch the supplemental videos to gain a better understanding of how the ideal is being met and the challenges facing these organizations. See you in the next video.